This is how it's supposed to be with ilm. You're supposed to be thinking about knowledge, daydreaming about knowledge, fantasizing about knowledge, busy with knowledge all of the time. All of the time. And this is one of the wisdoms of making your occupation something that pertains to knowledge. And it's not like how some ignorant people or some narrow-minded people, they say, oh, I don't want to be the imam of the masjid because I don't want to take no donations from anyone. Or I don't want to have a salary that's pertaining to dawah. It's going to affect my dawah. It's going to control my dawah. Money, once people start paying me, then they're going to control what I say. Or it's going to dictate how I move and where, where, I, go, where I go. I don't want to sell any book, books. I want my books to be for free. Or I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that. I don't want to take no money from dawah. I don't want to get paid. I don't want to have no salary for being a school teacher in the masjid. Nothing. Because you're not supposed to take money for knowledge. Because they're going to control you. Because, 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 and because, because. Imam Ahmed said this. Fulan can yakhud al-ujra ala tahdith. If you take a gold coin to tell a hadith. Imam Ahmed said boycott him. So that's the proof that they use. But these people. And we're not even getting into the proofs and evidences. The delir from kitab and sunnah. To state whether that's correct or incorrect. But the concept of the wisdom behind it is that when your money comes from studying and teaching and learning and giving da'wah, then you're always involved with ilm. You're stuck in the circle of ilm. And anyone in, with any common sense is going to make his chosen art, if he can, his means of income. That way he's always involved with it. He wakes up, he goes to sleep. Everything that you do is pertaining to Art. A person is an artist. I love to paint and to draw. I love it. I can't live without it. My fingertips always have to have huh? paint on them. No? Oil-based paint. All of the time. I live on a canvas. I make my money through canvas. My recreation is on a canvas. My pastime is on a canvas. That's not the same as a person who works in a hospital. Or who works as a mechanic or has a business for 8 hours out of the day, 10 hours out of the day, 12 hours out of the day to pay bills, to eat, to put food on the table. And then I have to come home, take a shower, change my clothes, and then paint. But I'm tired. I'm exhausted. My mind, my body, I have family, I have this, I have that. I have a social life. When is the time for me to be soaked into the canvas and the oil? So when the thing that you love to do and you are being financially compensated for that thing, not only is that a blessing and a dream for someone who really loves the thing, but it's wisdom because it keeps you involved in the circle. I have a class to teach the young children just Amma. I've memorized the entire Quran. But every time I teach this class on just Amma, it's review for me. It's reward for me. I'm being involved with the tafsir, with the Qur'an. I get a new understanding. Something else is opened up in my mind. Because I love the Qur'an and I love ilm. And I'm in love with it. So I'm attached to it. And my entire circle orbits or it, 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 it revolves around knowledge. I go to work. I'm studying. I'm getting paid to study. I'm getting paid to review. I'm getting paid to teach. On my break, I'm studying. In my house, I'm studying. When I'm driving, I'm studying. When I'm sitting, I'm studying. When someone asks me a question, it's a means of me enhancing my studies. I'm paying the cat on my stu- on my ilm, and I'm becoming sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper because I keep quoting the same hadith or the same ruling, and the knowledge becomes grounded. This is wisdom. This is wisdom in this, and the same applies as we said to the worldly sciences. Rather, all of the great explorers and scientists and. Uh, uh, musicians and artists, the people that you read about, the, uh, the the Renaissance people, this one and that one, none of them or none of them ever could achieve anything notable and worthy of being uh, eternally printed in the annals of history except through their patrons, except through funding, except that they had the money to free themselves to study and to research and to discover and to write it down and to formulate their theories and their discoveries. And the moment they had no money, they had to go out and work, they had to go out and do this. You see that their advances and their breakthroughs 
weren't as groundbreaking. This is a reality of life. This is a reality of life, huh? So a person who loves chemistry, love to be in a laboratory, and they get paid to do research, to be in a laboratory, that's a dream come true. I don't have to leave the laboratory. Everything is here for me. So be mindful of this. If you truly love knowledge, to always be connected to ilm and involved in ilm, teaching, learning, studying, reviewing, writing, speaking, it's a circle, it ne- the revolving door. It never, ever stops. It never ceases. It comes and it goes back again. So we have to ask ourselves this question. Are we like this? And do we truly love knowledge? And are we in love with knowledge? Huh? He says, قَدَ شَغَفَ حُبَّ That Imrat al-Aziz, the woman of the Aziz of Egypt, huh? she was in love with Yusuf. She lusted after Yusuf. And they said that we see her to be in plain misguidance. Because of how passionately connected she is to Yusuf. I read clear on this. This word, huh, is for someone shaguf. It's a higher meaning in the Arabic language of love and of attachment. And that's how you have to look at knowledge. Knowledge has to be your first wife. Knowledge has to be your, huh, your first true love, your only husband. That's ilm. That's ilm. So you have to be mindful of this, huh?